John, hi, nice to meet you. Hello, Howard. I'm Howard. We're here today at the uh, London Model Engineering Exhibition in Alexandra Palace. And uh, John, this is a magnificent piece of equipment that you've put together. You've designed and built this all yourself. I have, yes. And how many hours has it taken you to put this beautiful, massive plane together? <laughs> it's actually taken two years two to years. put together. That's build the aeroplane and build the engine that goes in it. Fantastic. So you, you, you have a workshop where you've with lathes and milling equipment and you've built your very own engine for this plane as well? Yes. I didn't intend to build the engine actually. I wanted to build this particular plane and it's a half scale Tiger Moth. Um, but during the construction I realised that it needed an engine bigger than I was originally planning and I couldn't find commercially one that was available. So the only choice was to actually make one. Fantastic. So that's what I did. Brilliant, brilliant. So it, is it a, a, a two-cylinder, four-cylinder and 16-cylinder rotary? <laughs> Tell us, what is it? No, it's a, an inverted twin-cylinder two-stroke of 350cc capacity. 350cc. Oh, I suppose yes. it's got to be quite powerful to get this. Yeah. Oh, and this does go off, this does fly. Oh, yes. Yes, this is a flying plane. To put it into perspective, it's seven times the size of a moped engine. That's, if that's, you go back to your yes, youth and riding around the moped, this absolutely. is seven times the size yeah. of your moped engine. Typical 50cc that's moped, yeah. yeah. So do you need a special license to fly something uh, like this? Yes, you do. Okay. The reason that the Large Model Association exists, or one of the reasons it exists, is to promote this sort of flying. But there are regulations that uh, have to be complied with. Any plane that weighs more than 20 kilos it's required that it's inspected during its construction by an approved person to ensure that it's built to an appropriate standard and structurally sound. Okay. And then, for every pilot who's going to fly that plane, because there may be more than one pilot, they would have to complete a flight test program of at least one hour, comprising at least six flights, to demonstrate not only that the airframe is structurally sound, but also that the pilot is capable of controlling it. Okay. And that's got to be done in uh, a restricted area, um, away from the public, just in case something goes wrong, of course. Of course. And only once that process has taken place and it's all been approved and signed off, will the individual pilot get an approval to fly it in front of the public. Do you know how many of, of these large planes there are out and about in the world? I mean, there must be relatively few in, in the UK, I think we're currently at about 1,700 planes over 20 kilos. Really? have been through the scheme since it started. Now, there, maybe they don't all exist now because the scheme's been going since the 80s and obviously things do time expire. But it's quite a small. The LMA itself has got over 1,000 members. So they're not as unusual as maybe you think they are. Absolutely magnificent. So, some of the detail um, about the about the plane. Then, what is it made of? Well, well, I'm, I'm guessing it's it's wood. Yeah, the yeah. wood sizes are exactly half, in dimensional terms, of what the full size was, and the same material, the ribs, everything. It's fabric covered as per the full size. And these little bumps you can see on here, this stitching is actually the fabric properly sewn on, exactly as the full size is. It's fantastic. So it's not just a caricature of model. If you take the covering off, it is an exact internal replica as well. So did you pretty much take the designs of the Tiger Moth and then scale them down yeah. to this build? Exactly. I started with the full-size drawings and basically scaled it back to half scale. Had to make one or two very minor structural adjustments because of the size difference and to make it practical to transport it because obviously it's quite a big lump so it needs to come apart. Yes. <laughs> How did you get it here? It goes in a van, but the wings <laughs> come off and yeah. each tailplane half comes off. Okay, okay. And then cables are to control the control surfaces. Exactly as the full size. Um, and, and what kind of um, what kind of servo system do you have in there? I remember my days of model engineering, it was tiny little you know servos that you would plug into a tiny little 27 megahertz receiver is, is are things different in this plane no, not so different the servos are bigger <laughs> yeah, I can um, and we don't use 27 meg anymore it's now all on 2.4 okay because you've been modern yeah. stuff but it's a standard model airplane receiver except there's two of them in there right. one of the requirements for an over 20 kilo model is 
redundancy all the way through the system. Okay. So if one system fails... Like a passenger plane? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. the controls are split across the model, across two receivers, each with individual power supplies. Right. And the servos, they're much, much bigger than the ones you remember, but exactly the same principles. So talking of power supplies, mm -hmm. what kind of power supply do you have in here? The servos are all powered through the receivers, um, and there's twin... Uh, Lithium ion batteries, 6.6 okay. .6 volts each, yep. 3,800 milliamps, which yep. is enough to fly this plane happily all weekend. Yes, yes, yeah. And that's just to drive the servos. That's obviously. just to drive yeah. the radio again, the servos. There's yeah. a separate power supply for the ignition for the engine. So is it a um, an auto start engine? Nope, it's like the original. You got to flip you have it. To, you have to get up there and yep. give the blade a spin yourself. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Do you have any footage of this in the air? Yes, point? there is. Um, I'm actually a, a member of the Ghost Squadron model aircraft team, which has been in existence since 1980, and we have quite a detailed website, and there's lots of pictures and videos of this flying, along with all our other models, on that website. Fantastic. So um, you, you mentioned that there are obviously other models mm -hmm. that are out and about there, yep. some of them perhaps built by yourself and other members. Yep. Um, th this to me, just because of its size, is a bit of a star of the show. Yes. But in, what other models are there that sort of uh, that pique your interest? Um, well, in the background, if you can see, there's a glider over yes. there. Yeah. That's actually also mine. But fundamentally, uh, and I think this is quite important, the Large Model Association members are aero models. Yeah. We don't tend to specialise in one type. I'm happy flying everything from a little rubber indoor model, control line you'll remember from your youth, free flight, yeah, yeah. these things, the jets, gliders, helicopters, and most of the members are the same. We don't specialise, we just love aero modelling and Maybe we built planes slightly bigger than some other people do. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a beauty, it really is. One final question. The engine, yeah. is this a glow fuel engine that you've designed and developed, or is this running on petrol? This is a petrol two-stroke. Okay. Yeah, glow motors of this size don't really work. Yeah. Trying to get the ignition from a glow when you've got such a large quantity of fuel in the cylinder doesn't work. So this is... Much more like your motorbike engine, yeah. two-stroke motorbike engine, yeah. twin cylinder, spark ignition. Excellent. So, John, before I say goodbye, yeah. you're a member of the uh, Large, Large Model, Model Association. Association. Yeah. Mm. The Large Model Association is the national body empowered by the CAA to deal with this certification and regulation we talked about earlier of large models. Okay. So we are the controlling body working under the CAA. Okay. So, it's so anything in... over 20 kilograms is yep. your problem? It is. <laughs> so it's, it's the LMA's own inspectors who do the airframe okay. checks, it's the LM, LMA's own examiners who do the, air, the, the flying checks and tests and bits and pieces. Superb. And then we're audited each year by the CAA to make sure we're following their guidance. Excellent. Okay, so all well controlled. John, Howard, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye for now.